our last lecture that is lecture 14, we analyzed the equilibrium of a system of particles and rigid bodies with the help of the principle of virtual work. Today we will start with another energy method or work method namely the potential energy method. This is in a way offshoot from the principle of virtual work. Before we start with uh, the principle of uh, stationary potential energy, I would like to define some uh, concepts which are very useful. First of all, we will talk about conservative forces, but uh, before I introduce uh, what are conservative forces, let me talk about force field. When the f force is a function of the uh, point in the given uh, region of three dimensional Euclidean space, the force is called a force field. For example, if we have two magnets, we know that the force of attraction or uh, repulsion depends upon the distance between the two. When the magnets, the opposite poles are nearer to each other, force is higher. When they are farther apart, then the force is less. Similarly, for electrostatic charges or gravitating bodies. So, in all these examples, we see that the magnitude and sometimes direction also changes from point to point. Similarly, if you take the example of a ordinary linear spring, then depending upon the and let us say the spring is connected to the mass, a given mass then depending upon the distance from of the mass from the spring uh, that is if the spring is uh, stretched or compressed more or less the force is also accordingly variable. So, uh, all these uh, types of forces which depend upon the location of the point they are called force fields. Now, <coughs> to define the, uh, the conservative forces, let us say a particle is moving in a force field and this field is uh, described with the help of a Cartesian rectangular Cartesian coordinate system x, y, z, uh, i, j, k are the uh, unit vectors along these coordinate axes. Now, particle is starting from point 1 and it is traveling along any path uh, to point 2. Let us say the force field is uh, designated as vector f which has components f x in l in the i direction, f y in the j direction and f z in the k direction. So, vector f is equal to f x i unit vector plus f y j unit vector, f z in the uh, k unit vector. We have already defined the work done as dot product of the force and the uh, elementary distance vector d r. So, f dotted with dr that is the differential work of over a small distance dr and if I integrate it from 1 to 2 then I get the total work done in moving the particle from position 1 to position 2. Taking the dot product we have f x dx plus f y dy plus f z dz and this is integrated from point position 1 to position 2. If this integral depends on only on the initial and the final positions and it is independent of the actual path followed by the particle, then the force field is called a conservative force field. For example, if I these are two particle uh, points 1 and 2 particle is moving from 1 to 2, it can take up this path, it can take up this path, it can take up any arbitrary path like this. If we find that all along any of these 
paths, the work done is identical to any other path, then the corresponding field of force is a conservative force field. Now, let us take the to give an example of such a conservative force field, let us consider a particle of weight W is to travel from position A to B under the field of gravity that is the only force acting is the gravitational pull. So, we can see that uh, as defined the differential work done F uh, dW is equal to F dotted with dr. Now, the force gravitational force is downward in the z direction as in according to this uh, coordinate system z vertically upward is positive. So, downward is minus uh, z direction. So, we will have the force vector as minus w k, k unit vector. So, taking the dot product we will have minus w times dz. Now, if I integrate from position A to B, position A, position A to position B, then we will have uh, integration from A to B negative uh, minus W times dz, which will give me uh, the, the uh, minus Wz from A to B. Okay, and if I substitute the uh, upper and lower limit and take the negative sign inside, then I will have w into the z coordinate of position A minus the z coordinate of position B. Hence, it is equal to w into the difference of the initial and the final heights. So, whether the particle has fallen from A to B according to this uh, path or this path or any other path, all that matters is the initial height minus the final height. So, essentially this total work done is independent of the actual path followed by the um, particle and it depends upon the initial minus the final height. Okay. So, gravitational force field is a conservative force field. We can also look at this uh, property in a slightly different manner. Suppose again I have a Cartesian coordinate system x y z x y z and two positions 1 and 2 and to reach from 1 to 2 either I can follow path 1 or path 2. Suppose I go from 1 to 2 by path 1 and then come back by path 2. That is I return to my initial starting point, the starting point. So, there the total path is a closed loop. If I find that the total work done in a closed path is 0, then also the force field is a conservative force field. It is very easy to see. Since we have already given the definition that in a conservative force field path does not matter. So, it means if I go by path 1 I will do certain amount of work and path 2 I will do exactly the same amount of work. But if I return from 2 to 1 by path 2 in the negative sense that is 1 to 2 is if it is in this direction, 2 to 1 is in this direction. So, work done will be negative of the previous one. So, since the total work done, uh, the work done in path 1 from 1 to 2 is same as 1 to 2 uh, work done in along path 2 from the same 1 to 2. So, in the return it is negative and hence it is 0, uh, total work done is 0. So, if you find that in if a particle moves in a force field in a along a closed loop, closed path and the total work done is 0, then also the force field is a conservative force field. I have already given you example of uh, gravitational force field. Let us 
look at another interesting example that of a linear elastic spring. A, you suppose here is a linear elastic spring with a spring constant uh, k okay, that is the force required per unit extension or compression of the spring. So, k is the uh, spring constant and a mass m is attached one end of the spring is fixed the other end is uh, attached to the mass and mass can travel on a frictionless or smooth surface. Now, if I pull the mass to in the positive x direction naturally the spring will be stretched and it will be in tension and it will try to pull the mass towards its original uh, position. So, it, there will be a restoring force, force will be in the negative x direction all right. Similarly, if I move the mass in the opposite direction the spring will be compressed and as a reaction the mass will be pushed up pushed back. So, again there will be a restoring force. So, uh, <clears throat> what we can say is that the force acting on the mass whether in tension or whether the spring is in tension or compression is equal to minus k that is spring constant times the deflection x. Okay. Now, work done over a small distance is f x into d x therefore, it is equal to minus k x d x and if I integrate from 1 to 2 this in elementary work from is uh, uh, integrated then I will have minus k x d x integration 1 to 2. So, again taking negative sign inside you can have it uh, work done from position 1 to 2 is k over 2 x 1 square minus x 2 square. Again it is independent it depends only on the final and the initial position. Okay. So, it means the force exerted by the spring is also a conservative force. Now, let us try to put it in a slightly more interesting way the same example which we have uh, already seen that is a particle is to move from A to B. Now, from in moving it from A to B certain amount of work has been done and when it returns by some other path or maybe by the same path since it is it becomes a closed loop it means the total work is 0. Now, that means that from B to A the particle has uh, done work on, on the system. First of all the system does the work and then in return the work is lost it means the particle has lost something to do the work and we can put it in a slightly different language that is in moving particle A to B a capacity or capability was imparted to the particle so that it can do the work while go going from B to A. So, that capacity to do or capability to do work of the particle is called the potential energy of the particle. Okay. Well, example you can take a gravitational field from A to B it has gained something by doing work um, by work being done on the particle namely it has gained height and due to that when it comes back to the original height it falls back to the original height it means it has lost something and that gain or loss is the potential energy. So, that when it comes back it can impart work to some other uh, system. So, we can say that the particle acquires the capacity to do work when it has reached B and this capacity is the potential energy. Well, in order to determine the potential energy of the uh, given particle or a rigid body 
we start with a state which we will call the datum state, the natural state or the some uh, identifiable state which we will call the zero potential energy state and this is called the datum. For example, the most uh, uh, elementary example of gravitational field. So, suppose the ground level I am taking it as the datum level. So, on the ground if the particle is lying then it has zero potential energy. So, when it is raised up it will have some positive potential energy. When it goes below the ground that is underneath then it has negative potential energy. So, the basic concept is the datum level that is the zero level of energy and depending upon positive or work done or negative work done the potential energy will be accordingly higher or lower that is positive or negative. Okay. <coughs> so, I have illustrated this suppose there is a, a sphere or a ball of weight w uh, then at the ground level the that is uh, y coordinate the height coordinate is 0. So, the potential energy is 0, but when it has gone up it, the potential energy will be w times y. If it goes down then it will be negative. That was the gravitational potential energy. Now, let us see the elastic potential energy since the spring is an elastic uh, um, element. So, the energy stored in the spring will be the elastic potential energy. Again, we will choose the datum for this uh, system as the natural length of the spring that is unstretched or uncompressed length of the spring. So, let us say when the mass is at position x is equal to 0, the spring was in its natural state, no deflection. So, the energy corresponding to this is the 0 energy. When it goes to in the positive direction, let us say it has reached over here, then we have already seen the energy is equal to half k times the displacement from the uh, 0 level that is x. So, half k x square and if, even if it goes in the negative direction that is spring is compressed again it will be half k minus x square which is uh, the square of minus is again positive. So, whether the spring go moves to the left or, or mass moves to the left or to the right the energy stored the potential energy in the uh, spring will be always positive that is the interesting aspect. When your system has both elastic potential energy as well as the gravitational energy then since the energy is a scalar quantity energy comes from work and work is scalar being a dot or scalar product. So, energy is also scalar quantity and the scalar quantities can be added or subtracted like uh, real numbers. Unlike uh, vectors where you have to use the parallelogram or tri triangle law of uh, vector addition, here a simple arithmetic addition or subtraction is uh, uh, needed. So, if I add both potential and uh, gravitational and elastic potential energies, then I will get the total energy potential energy V as V e plus V g. In whether it is gravitational case or the elastic case, if you differentiate the potential energy as you can easily see that here we have uh, let us say elastic potential energy. So, half k x square and if I differentiate this with respect to x, I will get minus k x i unit vector i. So, this is exactly the spring force and similarly when I took the example of uh, 
um, gravitational field. So, again you if you differentiate with respect to height you will get with the negative sign you will get the uh, vector of uh, gravitational force. So, <coughs> if you take the total potential and differentiate with respect to the corresponding coordinate with the negative sign you will get the uh, conservative force. We, we have earlier defined degrees of freedom in last lecture. So, suppose for a large system which has many degrees of freedom with the degrees of freedom the q 1, q 2 up to q n and you have expressed the potential energy in terms of q 1, q 2 up to q n. If you take the derivative of the potential energy with respect to any q, q i let us say and put a negative sign then it will give me the corresponding force f i. This may this force may be the actual force or in some if the if the degree of freedom is angle then it will give you moment etcetera etcetera. So, in general we call these as generalized forces. So, please please remember that the derivative of the total potential energy with respect to any degree of freedom will give me the corresponding generalized force. And for equilibrium uh, let us say a given particle is subjected to several uh, potentials, potential energies and if I have want to have the equilibrium if we want to examine the equilibrium of the particle then each and every generalized force should be equal to 0. It means dv by dq i that is derivative with respect to ith generalized coordinate is equal to 0. This is the statement of equilibrium of a system. Okay. Well, let us say my generalized coordinates are or degrees of freedom are x, y, z. Then the total force acting on the particle is equal to minus dv by dx unit vector i minus dv by dy unit vector j minus dv by dz unit vector k and this thing we can write in the notation of uh, vectors as gradient of V. V is a scalar field, a potential field and its gradient is a vector quantity. This is a well known uh, result from vector analysis. So, minus del V minus the gradient of the potential gives me the corresponding force. And if I have a virtual displacement del R vector which is given as del x i plus del y j del y j plus del z k. Then taking the uh, dot product of the force with the virtual displacement I will get the virtual work del w is equal to dot product of f with del r and if you carry out this dot product then dv by dx into del x plus dv by dy into del y plus dv by dz into dz, uh, del z. That is exact nothing but minus of the del v that is the variation the virtual difference between the two positions of the potential energy. Once again this virtual difference is due to the virtual displacement, this is not the actual displacement. That is the important thing is that in, a, in carrying out this virtual displacement the forces do not change otherwise it will be the actual displacement particularly for when a spring is involved any additional deflection will cause additional tension or compression and hence the force will change. But when you give virtual displacement as compared to the real displacement, the virtual displacement will not cause any change in the tension or compression. 
so that artificial situation you have to bear in mind so this this is sometime del v is called the variation or first variation of potential energy so the equivalent principle to the principle of virtual work is the that del v is equal to 0 so when a system is a, at equilibrium then the first variation of the total potential energy which will include uh, gravitational potential energy spring energy is potential energy or any other uh, potential due to a conservative force so if i calculate the variation of that potential energy when a virtual displacement was applied and set that variation equal to 0 then the system is in equilibrium this statement is both sufficient and necessary that is if the system is in equilibrium del v is equal to 0 and if del v is equal to 0 then the system is in equilibrium provided our fields force fields are whatever force field is acting they are conservative if there is friction or any other dissipative or mechanism then the field will no longer be conservative it will be dis dissipative field so then the virtual uh, this principle of uh, first variation of uh, potential energy cannot be applied now let us uh, recapitulate and uh, lay down the procedure for examining the equilibrium of a system with many degrees of freedom using potential energy method. So, I will go over the step by step procedure. First, you examine the system and identify what are the degrees of freedom that is each coordinate or generalized coordinate should be we should be able to vary independently that is without affecting the other uh, coordinates ok. So, first identify the degrees of freedom let us say there are n degrees of freedom q 1, q 2 up to q n. Then important thing is you examine whether the system which we are dealing with is it uh, uh, <coughs> conservative or it has some dissipative uh, components that is a friction or viscous or dry friction or uh, in higher system some dissipative mechanism uh, evolve heat. So, we sh should not have those uh, dissipative uh, components. So, all it means our system is totally conservative system. Then the potential energy of the total potential energy of the system that is V is expressed in terms of Q1, Q generalized coordinates Q1, Q2 up to Qn. Okay. So, V is a function of Qi, I going from 1 to n. Then you determine the first variation of V that is dV by dQi into d, uh, del Qi that is del Q1, del Q2 etcetera are the virtual displacements and you take the corresponding partial derivatives multiply and add you will get the total variation of the potential energy. After having calculated this you set it equal to 0 and equivalently it means each of the partial derivatives is equal to 0 because dq del q1 del q2 etc they can be varied independent of each other there is there is no connection so it means in general that statement is valid del v is equal to 0 is valid if and only if all the partial derivatives are individually zero well <coughs> suppose uh, this condition is uh, found to be valid then what does it uh, geometrically or graphically signify? These are also from calculus you know these are the conditions for the maxima or minima or stationary value of a function of several variables. So, it means here I have depicted it for V as a function of only one variable then it is a curve if it is a function of uh, 
two variables, then it is a surface oh, and so on and so forth, higher order uh, surfaces you can examine. So, in a curve, uh, one dimensional case, the function V that is the total potential energy will be varying like this and at equilibrium, it can be maximum, it can be minimum or there can be an inflection point that is it changes from uh, con uh, concave to convex. So, that inflection, so all the three conditions will imply that the slope is 0 that is the tangent is parallel to a q axis similarly over here, similarly over here. So, this is the graphical interpretation that is at equilibrium potential energy is either maximum, minimum or it goes through uh, an inflection. Well, a further analysis which we will be taking up perhaps in the next lecture will show us that these three conditions will correspond to three qualities or three types of uh, equilibrium, st unstable, stable and neutral or something like that. Now, let us take up couple of examples to illustrate our uh, principles. Suppose, here is a block of weight W which is slowly made to rest on a spring. So, the spring will be under compression. The spring constant K Newtons per meter uh, deflection of the spring uh, is shown here. Calculate the deflection of the spring at equilibrium configuration. So, when you have slowly placed it and naturally it will um, the mass will go down and what is the equilibrium position of the mass. As I said that the first before starting to compute the total potential energy you have to fix your datum and since in this problem only one coordinate that is the deflection that is x coordinate is involved. So, it is a single degree of freedom uh, system that is th that degree is x. I am taking downward as positive uh, x from here. So, this is the unstretched condition. So, the downward is positive. Now, the natural state of the spring is taken as the datum for the spring and the when it is just touching, when the mass is just touching the spring without its force being acting on the spring, that is the datum for the mass. So, we, keeping this in mind, we will then compute the uh, gravitational potential energy of the mass W times x with the negative sign okay? because it is proportional to the height that is the difference ab above the datum. So, but our x axis is downward so that is why we have taken it negative here and here it is minus x square which is simply x square. So, half k x square is the elastic potential. So, the system of mass and the spring, the total system has the total potential of minus w x plus half k x square. Then for equilibrium dv by dx is equal to 0 and that will give me minus w plus k x is equal to 0 and hence x is equal to w over k, a very simple problem but it illustrates all the points that is the total potential energy of the system comprising of the weight and the spring is the contribution of the weight and contribution of the spring. And then you simply take the slope or derivative and set it equal to 0 that will be giving you the equilibrium compression of the spring W by k simple. Let me go to a slightly more uh, complex problem. This problem consists of two rods each of length uh, 3 meters 
and weight 25 uh, mass 25 kg all right and there is a spring attached to one of the rods the other rod is attached to a fixed support and the spring is also on the other end uh, attached to a fixed support so this distance is fixed between these two supports now the spring is unstretched when the bars are horizontal so this datum state is defined that is when both the bars are uh, horizontal that is theta is equal to 0. So, this will also be horizontal and at that time whatever the length that is the total distance minus 6 meters that will be the unstretched length of the spring. And when the system is released due to weight the bars will go down and simultaneously they will stretch the spring and spring will be storing elastic potential energy these two bars will have the gravitational potential. So, let us see first of all uh, stretch of the spring what is the change in length of the spring originally let us say uh, it is this change in length will be the uh, decrease in the length of overhead because the total length is same. So, if I can determine the decrease in the length from this point to this point, point A to point B originally this was 2 L. So, now it is 2 times cosine of cosine theta of L, L times cosine theta. So, 2 L minus 2 L cosine theta, 2 L taken common out 1 minus cosine theta. Okay. So, this is the change in length of the spring because the total length was to remain constant. So, uh, next we see how the uh, C g of the rod has gone down. What is the shift of the C g? Originally bars were in straight line. So, C g was somewhere here. Now, it has gone down and the center of gravity will tell us how much is the change in the potential energy. So, well L, the bars are assumed to be uniform. So, the C g will be at half the length L by 2 times sin of theta. So, L by 2 sin theta. So, we have elastic as well as uh, gravitational potential easy to calculate. So, the total potential energy of the system is for the first the elastic component half k times change in length of the spring squared. So, 2 L into 1 minus cosine theta whole squared minus because it is going down each bar is going down W into L by 2 sin theta W into change in height and since 2 bars in order so minus 2 W L by 2 sin theta. And for equilibrium if I differentiate there is only one degree of freedom. So, d v by d theta total potential energy is capital V d v by d theta is equal to 0 and if I take the derivative and simplify it I will get 73.39 into 1 minus cosine theta is equal to cotangent theta. This is a trigonometric equation which can be solved either by trial or error trial and error method or graphically or some numerical analysis techniques are available and if you apply any of these methods you will get theta is equal to 17.1 degrees. Okay. So, it means just by calculating the total potential energy and the interesting thing is this potential energy is a scalar quantity you can add subtract do anything and then you have to and that has to be obtained as a function of the degree of freedom theta and differentiate it at set equal to 0 as simple as that you will get the equilibrium configuration. Let me take up slightly more uh, involved problem here is uh, <coughs> determine the mass m of the block required for equilibrium of a uniform 10 kilogram rod this is the rod shown 
when theta is equal to 20 degree. Now let me explain the problem. Here is a rod. One end of the rod is pinned over here and the other end is attached to a an inextensible string which goes over a pulley and carries a mass m. Right? So, for a given value of theta that is 20 degree, what is the value of mass which is required to maintain the system in equilibrium? Right? That is system should be at rest, it does not go up or down. Now, first of all, we will take the datum as theta is equal to 0 degree configuration. That is, you can see when this bar A B is horizontal, B is somewhere over here and A is of course, fixed point. So, it is horizontal and then the rod will be uh, and then the string will be going like this and the mass will be at some position over here. So, that is my datum configuration and any other configuration they is given by the angle theta that is the only uh, variable involved because theta will uniquely determine the configuration of A B and since the total length is fixed it will uniquely determine the position of m. So, one degree of freedom system. So, <coughs> what I have to do is that you I have to calculate the change in the length B C. Of course, I am neglecting the diameter etcetera of the pulley. So, uh, if I can find the change in the length of B C and since the string is inextensible total length remaining same. So, that means I will know the change in height of mass m right. So, let us do that. Uh, <coughs> only one potential one type of potential energy is involved namely the gravitational potential energy and first of all the rod is 10 kilogram in mass. So, mass into g that is the weight. So, 10 into 9.81 and then the center of gravity at the mid length of the rod, rod length is L equal to 1.5. So, mid length is 1.5 to divided by 2 into sin theta that is the height of the C g from the datum. So, that is the potential energy of the rod, it is going up. So, potential energy is positive and as the rod goes up the mass is going down. So, mass times 9.81 that is the weight into the change in height del, del y right. So, I have got the both the potential energy of the mass and the rod. To determine del y all that is needed is trigonometry datum in the datum condition A B dash C that is the this part of the figure. When it is horizontal A B is here and C is over here and when it has gone through a rotation of theta then this is the configuration. So, this is the configuration all you have to do is that uh, <coughs> you have to find out B dash C which from the Pythagoras theorem you can easily see 1.5 square plus 1.2 square whole under root which comes out to be 1.92. So, this is 1.92 and when it has gone through a rotation of angle theta then it is uh, to be obtained well you can easily see 1.5 cosine theta that is this and uh, 1.2 minus 1 point. So, uh, I have to find out this height. So, you can see that uh, yeah, 1.5 cosine theta square plus uh, uh, 1.2 minus so that, that height. So,
this will come out to be 3.69 minus 3.6 sin theta uh, sin square theta sorry sin square theta uh, whole under root. So, the difference between the two is B dash C minus B C is given by this quantity and uh, from 1 and 2 we can find out the total potential A energy of the system is 73.6 sin theta minus 9.81 m into 1.92 into the 3.69 minus 3.6 sin theta and since there is only one degree of freedom dv by d theta is equal to 0 all right. So, I have this equation and since theta is equal to 20 degree is given to us. So, we will have uh, sin theta substituted for sin 20 degrees and we will find that the mass required to obtain equilibrium is 6.54 kilogram. So, at theta inclination of the rod equal to 20 degree to the horizontal, the necessary magnitude of the mass to maintain equilibrium is 6.54 kilogram. Well, all the examples which I have taken are corresponding to 1 degree of freedom. So, let us consider is an example with 2 degrees of freedom. The example is like this, the spring connecting bodies A and B, these are 2 bodies which can slide down on these 2 inclined planes, no friction involved. Body A has a weight of 60 Newton, body B has a weight of 90 Newtons and they are connected with the help of a linear elastic spring with spring constant as 3 Newtons per millimeter. Okay. The unstretched length of the spring is given as 450 millimeters and the weights are given as already told 60 and 90 what is the stretched length of this spring for equilibrium all right now the mass and the weight a and weight b they can move independently of course there is a spring attached to it to them but it, they don't have to be always horizontal this can be at a higher level this can be at a lower level or vice versa so in that sense they are and uh, they constitute a system of 2 degrees my own. Okay. I could have chosen the dis displacement from this apex to this and second as this to this, but I have chosen slightly different uh, uh, generalized coordinates. Let me show you. This apex I am taking as the datum for my system that is at this point the energy is 0 and this is A and this is B and the distance of A from the apex is 1 degree of freedom. The other degree instead of oh, you might have chosen this, but for simplicity I have chosen the stretched length AB between the two because that is also uniquely determined as the second degree of freedom. So, L which is the stretch length of the spring as the second degree of freedom. So, D and L are our two degrees of freedom. Well, <coughs> first of all from the datum I will find out how low is the uh, mass um, weight A. So, this is D, so I have to find out this height from the datum, what is the depth of A below the datum from below you can say point O. So, that is D cosine theta and since it is below it is negative. So, 
weight into d cosine theta cosine 45 degree with a negative sign and the second thing is the potential energy of the spring all right so and this is the potential energy of the spring that is uh, 3 newtons per um, millimeter it means 3000 newtons per meter so i am using meter as my unit for length so that's why half k that is half into 3000 the final length l minus 0.45 so that is the stretch whole square so half k x square and for the uh, weight b what is this ok so again l square minus because this is 90 degrees so i can by pythagoras theorem l square minus d square whole under root will give me this length and again i will take the cosine of this so you get the contribution to the potential energy of ma, uh, weight b is l square minus d square under root into cosine of 45 degree into 90 so this is the total potential energy and once you have this as the potential energy it has two degrees of freedom d and l so for equilibrium dv by dd is equal to 0 dv by dl is equal to 0 i will get two equations so well differentiation is quite elementary so one equation will be d over root of l square minus d square is equal to 0.667 and the other equation is l over l square minus d square is equal to this much so from these two equations i can determine the two unknowns okay so for example if i square and square 2 and square 1 and subtract that is and this will give me l square over l square minus d square this will give me d square over l, l square minus d square when i subtract it i will get uh, l square minus d square over l square minus d square is equal to 1 and that will give me finally the value of length l which comes out to be 475 millimeter so there is a stretch of 25 millimeter in the spring so a system of two degrees of freedom can be very easily determined uh, or uh, established for equilibrium with the help of the stationary value or min maximum minimum or inflection value of the potential energy in our lec next lecture as i have already indicated we will see how these three conditions maximum minimum or inflection will correspond to a quality of the equilibrium whether the equilibrium is stable unstable or it is neutral okay so when the system of forces is conservative no dissipative forces are involved then we can get the analysis of equilibrium in a very simple way that is you will, uh, you will take the first variation of the total potential energy set it equal to 0 and that will define the equilibrium so that is all for the today's lecture mm -hmm.